Hi Cancers, welcome back to RZ Tarot. If you're new here, my name is Sis, and any background noise, the snoring dogs, <laughs> mowing neighbor, please forgive all those noises. This is our <clears throat> overall reading for the month of May for my Cancers. Let's jump in and see what the overall energy is going to be for Cancer. Our overall energy, our top card, we have the Six of Pentacles. And this is the Lord of Material Success. It is a card of charity. Uh, given uh, our resources, our time, and our energy. But it's also allowing ourselves to be in the receiving position of that. Uh, most of the time when it comes upright, it's an indication that we have resources, time, and energy that uh, we can share with others. The underneath energy, we have our Queen of the Earth, which in regular tarot would be our Queen of Pentacles. I like seeing this because this is uh, feeling safe, secure, confident. Uh, so basically, the month of May, the energy, the main energy coming forth for us seems to be that we are creating and working towards creating an environment for ourselves, but also for our loved ones and others of safety, security, feeling confident and like everything's okay. A sense of well-being and in situations where things feel a little iffy, you know, we build our confidence through that and have that trust and faith going forward so yeah this seems to be our main energy and what we're what we seem to be wanting to focus on during the month of may is bringing that sense of security back to the physical realm uh the fact has come in on the pentacles is an indication that some of us may have be struggling with jobs uh, material resources things like that and what we're really wanting to create is the environment even in situations where we've got a little lack going that we feel still feel blessed and still counting our blessings so to say so that we do feel prosperous and getting that mindset that abundance is flowing to us that it's only a temporary situation so yeah our strength for the month we have the world tree upright that's our world card in regular tarot we have the horn god upright and that is our emperor in regular tarot underneath that we have the three of chalices upright with the two of chalices as the underneath energy the underneath energy is commitment. That two of chalices brings us into uh, being committed, deepening our commitments towards something, uh, being in partnership. A lot of times it indicates relationship where we are, are deepening our commitment to the relationship. So yeah, it's it's also that e sort of equal exchange of both partners being committed to each other. That's the underneath energy uh, of what's going on with our strength is we have a new commitment. We are deepening our commitments to our relationships and what's going on. The world tree, that world card is showing us. That we have reached a point in areas of our life that some things have come full circle and it's time to move past them. Uh, it does insinuate endings, uh, wrapping up things, <laughs> tying up loose ends because we're moving into a new cycle, into something different. With that horn god, that emperor, it does show us, like I said, tying up loose ends from the world tree of uh, planning, building, making whatever sacrifices we've got to make to get things built and uh, manifested and brought about, but we're also protecting what we're building. Uh, with our horn god as a representation of our emperor, he brings in the, that sense of the changing seasons. Things, uh, like I said, we reach the point 
Um, there are, there's a season in our life that we're leaving behind and we're going into a new phase, a new season with the world card and we're headed in the right direction. Our strength is, is being, being committed to, uh, making these changes in, in holding the attitude in, uh, faith within our own psyche that it's something positive to celebrate. Our three of chalices is celebrating. But you'll notice she's not celebrating alone. She's celebrating with her friends, her family, and her loved ones. It's a really good time. So, uh, like I said, we are, our strength is looking to the future with uh, enthusiasm, with optimism, and, and really with an excited expectation that we're setting off on a new adventure. Our oracle card that comes underneath it is, oh, I love our ladybug, surrender to the fly. Surrender to the fly. Yeah, and that is, it's, sorry about the glare or the blur. This card does tell us don't fight against uh, the currents uh, in the way things are flowing. Just flow with it to yeah, and keep that optimism. Uh, and keep making plans, going in a direction, tying up any loose ends from what's coming to an end. Let it go. Tie up those loose ends and prepare yourself to set out on a new journey, a new adventure. Any struggles or challenges that we might have during the month. We have our sheet upright and that is temperance card. Uh, in the regular tarot, our seed. We have the moon underneath our seed. We have the holly king underneath that. And then the eight of athames. Oh, now, the thing I'm noticing right off the bat, we've got three major arcana cards coming up on our challenge. So this is a life pattern, something that's going to come up for us on the mental, emotional level. That's going to be a little bit of a struggle for us. With our seed, that is... Um, <clears throat> feeling confident in our ability to do the alchemy, to work our way through the changes. It very much plays back on our horn god, the emperor. Making the choices, planning, getting clear direction, and going forward with it. We're, we're feeling a little insecure about it and unconfident in our abilities. With our sheet, it brings in the aspect that we're getting a message of don't worry, the universe is working with you. See all her little sprites helping her and whispering in, into her ear exactly what needs to be done, how much to pour in and things like that. How to mix everything and get it flowing together really well. It's temperance. Uh, the underneath energy is our fear card, our moon card, the shadows in the night that bother us. But just know, you know, our moon comes out during the night to give us the light and the guidance to find the dawn when the sun comes up and takes over to give us clarity. Our moon gives us clarity also. So we have to <clears throat> overcome some of our darker fears, some of the fear of the circumstances um, around what's happening in our life right now in order to see opportunity. Opportunity in those darker moments, in those scary moments. You'll see our fish jumping in the reflection of the, the moonlight. Uh, have confidence that your goddess Luna will come out and pay attention because she might show you some opportunities, some different things you can do that you can reach out and take advantage of during these times. So yeah, uh, underneath that we have our Holly King and this is our Hermit card. And with our Holly King, it's insinuating because it's got the moon on top of him. It's insinuating we're not really confident about doing things on our own. That we like to have the direction of other people. And it's also an insinuation that we might not um, <clears throat> feel absolutely comfortable in being a guide for others, so to say. Because, you know, he's our Holly King. He is that God, that way seer that goes out before everyone, that ventures out. And it's, how do I put this? He's, everybody says he's um, isolated. He isolates himself, that he's reclusive. 
but the thing to know about our Holly King, our Hermit, is even though he's reclusive, he likes to have his time alone, and he likes to do things his way, he likes his little bit of isolation, he's not reclusive. The people that know him, that follow him, that rely on him, they know exactly where to find him always because he's guiding them with his own inner light and hopes that they will learn how to pull out their own light and guide their self. So it's an insinuation we may not feel very confident in being that type of a leader leading the way, going out on our own. And the underneath energy of them is the eight of Athamase, self-restriction. Of We're used to, and you'll see she's walking through a path of her Athamase, helping guide her. Uh, it's insinuating we're used to having a lot more outer guidance and direction for what we, where we go, how we make our plans and what we're doing. And we're, we've hit a pivotal point in May where we've got the freedom, the freedom to, and, and we're actually in situations where we need, need to be more self-guided and more confident in our own abilities. So, yeah, that seems to be what our uh, big challenge is going to be, is overcome some of our insecurities and start feeling uh, more confident in being self-directed. The two oracle cards that come underneath, our first one, we have Heed Your Dreams. Heed Your Dreams. The next one, A Time to Reflect. So, my cancers just know what I'm picking up with these is... Uh, for some of us, we might be having um, dreams, truly. Uh, get you a, a book, dream journal, something. Start paying attention to your dreams and reflect on them. Don't ask others to interpret the dream for you. You reflect on it and see what it's saying to you first. Self-directed, self-directed. If you, you know, it, get advice from someone else if you've got dreams or, you know, visions or sign symbols coming to you that you don't really understand you rely on your own intuition first see what you the message is from you and then if you, you have doubts about it ask someone else to give you their version but no it's going to be their interpretation you're being asked to uh trust your own Ability to interpret things for yourself, the Holly King. Interpret things for yourself first. It's always nice to have a backup second opinion in case you've overlooked something and or you've been biased in your interpretation. But uh, learn how to trust and heed the messages coming to you. The third eye, heed those messages. Uh, it is to connect with the divine, to the God, to the spirit realm, and trust your own ability to be self-directed. In our professional life, business, school, job, career, whatever, professional life, you know what I'm talking about. We've got the six of maze upright. We have four pentacles upright. Three of pentacles upright. And then the ten of athamaze underneath as the underlying energy. Our ten of athamaze is letting go of the past. Absolutely. Reaching a point in, uh, that we have made the decision, it's time to let go of what we've been doing and uh, tie up the loose ends, the world card, and move on from what we've been doing. Uh, the Six of Athamase on tops shows us moving into uh, calmer times away from the stormy times we might be experiencing. Uh, the Six of is also a card about hitting that pivotal point of something's occurred in our journey that has really caused us to switch directions, to go in a different directions. Uh, what seems to have occurred is the four pentacles of, um, I'm reading it as the collective of what we've all been through, of uh, the self-isolation of not being able to really answer your door, having to communicate through a door, things like that, but being weary of others, but also having to juggle some of our finances around uh, and be very frugal 
and um, the card also insinuates that our focus has went down to uh, how to make more money, how to bring in more money kind of thing because uh, our four of pentacles has us more in a save, saving that money type grip mode worrying about finances. Underneath that is our three of pentacles and our three of pentacles is about planning, making plans. Um, yeah, um... Um, I, yeah, I'm really thinking for a lot of my cancers, we're having to go in a different direction when it comes to our job, career, and personal business life. That we're, we have been put into a position where we're now having to uh, either change jobs, look for a new job, do something different. Uh, with that three of pentacles, that is uh, planning blueprints, getting your direction, being self-directed. Like I said, that may be why a part of our struggle is uh, we're no longer bound by a company job, something like that, that's give us the direction when it comes to how to bring in material resources and things. So, yeah. Our next cards, we have the Five of Pentacles. And our Five of Pentacles, we confirm, so we feel a little bit in lack or not... Uh, in the flow of money, so to say. Underneath is the Wheel of the Year, another card that insinuates change. Things have changed. That wheel have, has turned. I like the fact that it's upright. It's a positive upswing for us, even though it may not feel like it with uh, the Five of Pentacles. And the underneath energy is the Seven of Pentacles, a steady stream of income. This is what this card reminds me of, is we are actually... Uh, worried and focused on we're having to make a change a change to uh, bring in a steady flow of income with that five of pentacles it's going to bring me back to our main card of our lunar goddess uh, showing us opportunities available to us in the hard moments those darker you know the darker the night moments uh, there's still opportunity available to us. So that's one one thing, one uh, reason to overcome any fear that we have when it comes to being self-directed because there's a lot opportunities available to us. Uh, the Five of Pentacles also brings in the sense of even though we're going through a hard time and the last thing a lot of us want to do in times of struggle or lack, poverty, things like that, um, we don't really feel like um, spirituality, being bombarded with spirituality. But then others of us will fall on religion for our faith and, and to get us through in those moments. But uh, the fact that um, we've got heed, heed your dreams, a time to reflect, our uh, Five of Pentacles also brings in that sense of it's time for you to pull into your higher power, your faith and your trust in the higher power. And especially if you're doing the hermit mode, which we seem to be going to, having to look at some of our being that way seer, that leader that's going out in the dark. Uh, trust in, because you're getting dreams, trust in spirit. Your spirit guides the divine, um, your higher self to give you clear direction of what to do. Like I said, we've definitely got a, a positive upswing when it comes to as long as we will look for the opportunities available right around us and not uh, ignoring what's available to us. We're, we're, we've got a chance, a real positive a uh, card to bring in that steady flow of income prosperity but it's up to us to take advantage of it to reach out and get it and we've got to be able to see it first and so that we can reach out and get it i'm using our life purpose oracles this month for all of us because i think in our business career jobs area we all need that little extra advice from spirit, from our guides, from the divine. Anything that we're overlooking or just anything they want to tell us, 
advice, whatever, to give us through these cards. Our first one, we got counseling. You heal with kind words, wise advice, and an em em empathetic ear. Oh, my Lord. I will learn to say that word for it's over. No, I didn't in the last one either. The uh, next card, we got flowers. Working with flowers opens your heart and brings blessings to others through your life purpose. Now, for any of you, if any of these resonate, use your own intuition. It's, it's pinging on something to go with it. But what I'm picking up is um, because we're going to be doing a lot of our own self-counseling, our own hermit card. Um during the month of May, uh, one of the things when, when you incorporate flowers is beauty, self-counseling of making sure you're looking at the beauty around you, to the sweet-smelling things around you, aromatherapy. Flowers will also represent aromatherapy, perfumes, things like that. Just know that what, how you are counseling yourself, this is what you counsel yourself on. This is the energy you stay focused on. That three of chalices, that two of chalices, dedicate yourself to the beauty and the wonder of life, to the celebrations of life, the positive things in life, and create that in your environment. Uh, but share it with all the others around you because we do have that six of pentacles of sharing that time, energy, resources, share with others around you that are going through some of the th same struggles that you're going through. Because, yeah, be the her be that uh, hermit, that holly king that knows that others are following your inner light as you follow it. Okay, our next card, this is our uh, personal life. This is our family, our home, our friends, you know, our tribe, that energy, that arena. Our first card, we've got the Eight of Pentacles upright, the Justice card upright, and then we have our Sun card reversed. So, uh, our personal life, our family, friends, what's going on in our home is being overshadowed by worry about money making money making money uh with that justice card is telling us we need to balance back balance back and remember the six of pentacles is not all about money and resources it's about time and attention time and attention so yeah um so most definitely for my cancers we need to really stop and reflect on how much is our home environment, our family, our close circles, how much stress is there about making money in that we might need to switch up some of the energy when we get deep into stress like that. I mean, it don't bring the healing that some cards to healing when it's coming up reversed is putting us back in the night in the shadow in and not getting us into the healing prosperity and abundance we need to bring it up right and heal that through balancing not ignoring the fact that it's it's a major issue for our home but to come away from it to take a break away from it some so yeah don't let that be the whole topic of your interaction with your tribe our next cards, we've got the Two of Pentacles, learning new skills and talents, also balancing. Uh, then we have our Ten of Wands underneath that, dedication, but also the card warns us about overdoing ourselves, taking on too much to ourselves. Uh, the underneath of that is our Page of Wands, like seeing him. So this brings, narrows it down. Our Ten of Wands is not having us. Uh, overdoing it's telling us to be dedicated to learning something new doing something new learning how to juggle balance uh the two of pentacles can be a card that causes you to go back to school to get further education to do more study on your own to um really hone some of your skills but you're doing it at a basic level of two of uh right here you've already honed your skills 
uh, with the eight. With the seven up here, that has you hands on honing a skill. This card is telling us to learn how to the basics. To get your directions, pick a, pick a vocation you want to go in and go with it. Start learning it. Pick up what you need and dedicate yourself to it. And with our page of wands, that is enthusiasm, ambition, passion. Uh, our wands are the fire of the gods that Prometheus gave to us and placed it within our uh, centers and said, you know, you're going to create with it and you're going to destroy with it. Use it wisely. And this is to be enthused. The two and the three of chalices. Adventure. Anticipate wonderful new adventures in your life. Instead of uh, allowing fears to bog it down and have you afraid to move forward in new directions. Learn new things. New skills. Our next card we've got the dragonfly. Imagination. One thing the dragonfly is bringing forward for me is if you ever seen a dragonfly fly and all of a sudden they dead stop in midair and they're just hovering and all of a sudden they take off again in a totally different direction. Yeah, our dragonfly brings us the message that um, we have an amazing opportunities available to us, an array of amazing possibilities of manifesting and creating something new. If we will unleash our imagination and allow ourselves to go in a different direction, to do something different, to be more self-guided and come out of that restrictive mode of needing outer influences to give us our direction. Yeah, be brave, be that dragonfly that unleashes your imagination and don't hesitate for a second of learning something new and trying something different. Go with it. Our next card is the frog healing. I love our little froggy. Our little froggies is about tribe, about croaking to our tribe, calling out to our tribe, brings in healing and the overall sense of mind, body, and spirit, the whole total healing process. Our little froggy is also a prosperity symbol, which I really like. And right now, my cancer is, like I said, one of the big things for my cancer, a big focus that's even overshadowing our personal life is making money. Just know the fact that our little froggy has shown up. That is one of your first signs for May of Prosperities is on its way. Absolutely. But don't forget. Counseling. Counsel yourself. Beautiful, positive things. Look for the beauty in life. Surround yourself with the beauty in life. And surround your tribe. With that also. Our three chalices. It incorporates everyone. All of our loved ones. Celebrating it with us. So, yeah, talk to your tribe, reach out to them, make sure you're doing positive talk, positive counseling for others in your life because we're all going through the same thing. Uh, a lot of us have this overshadowing every area of our life. How are we going to make some money? So, yeah, <clears throat> our next card we've got, Heart Guardian. Love and let yourself be loved. This is the ultimate cancer Sun in Cancer Energy. This is one of our major lessons. If you have cancer in your sun sign, this is one of your major lessons that you brought forth with you into this incarnation. Is to nurture others, but at the same time, allow yourself to be nurtured. And that's a hard one for my cancers sometimes. And this is what our heart guardian is asking us to do. The six of pentacles. To nurture others, but also to allow ourselves to be nurtured. So yeah, bringing us, bringing us in on a life lesson for my can uh, son, uh, son in cancers. Our next one is Stargazer. Set your sights 
higher. Don't don't keep yourself restricted. Don't be afraid to be self-directed. Look through the night, through those fears, and look for the opportunity and grab hold of them. Don't hold yourself back from them. Set your sights higher. Our stargazer is telling you, set your sights higher and go for it. Our last two cards, Cancer, our first one, we have I am a spirit having a human experience and I'm here to get closer to love. Absolutely, closer to love. Very much goes with allow yourself to be loved. Love and allow yourself to be loved. And our last one is my vibes speak louder than my words. Absolutely. Your vibes speak louder than your words. You even counsel others with your vibe. Absolutely. Okay, my Cancers, that's all I have for us for the month of May. I'll be putting out other videos for us during the month. Uh, so hit that uh, bell button so that you can be notified when I put out our mid-month readings and maybe some other ones that I might have time to get to and do. Okay, so I want to wish you a very prosperous month, a stress-free month, a bold and courageous month to be the Holly King, to trust yourself, pay attention to your dreams, my Cancers, and really reflect on what you're getting, your intuition, start trusting it. And yeah, very prosperous month, health-filled month, and a month also filled with unconditional love where you love and allow yourself to be loved. Absolutely. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. I hope I'll see you next time. Bless be.